wish I knew you before the mountains. Uh, okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about the last cycle of plastic, but I'm going to use one very specific example, and that is parts of the production of pallet wrap. Um, so basically what happens is the truck um, delivers the plastic resin pellets to the factory and it gets pumped into a main silo where it is then vacuumed into something called a weigh batch system. And this weigh batch system weighs out very specific amounts of different colours and different products of plastic and puts them all into an extruder. Um, and this extruder will melt it all into one plastic. And it uses a closed loop feedback system in these heating bands and this is to make sure that it is at a consistent and very accurate temperature. You can think of this like when you're driving you don't just have 100% and 0% acceleration. What you do is, if you're accelerating up to 100, as you get to 100, you kind of take off the accelerator just a little bit. So you get to the just at the right point, and then you're only putting enough energy in to keep at 100. You're not accelerating or decelerating. And so once it goes through the extruder, it gets put into the die, which is just a shaping device, blows it up into a big bubble. And this bubble is three stories tall. And that's so that it can cool quick enough so that when it gets pressed back together, it doesn't stick. The air pressure is controlled inside and outside the bubble to make sure that it is the perfect shape. And there are three ultrasonic sensors to measure the thickness of the plastic itself because it has to be within uh, one thousandth of a millimetre accurate. And so once it does this, it gets up to the nip roller and the nip roller just flattens the bubble back into two sheets and it goes through a series of winders that are all speed controlled to make sure there's not too much tension or too little tension. And then once it does this, it gets to a knife section where there are three knives, one in the middle to split it into two sheets and two on the outside to trim off the corners, the edges, and that gets fed back into a secondary system called the regrind system. And this basically just remelts it and re-puts it into pellets and puts it back into the system again. And so what I really want to pinpoint is how, how delicate and how intricate this production is. Um, but all we're going to do is wrap it around a pallet and slit it with a knife, scrunch it up and throw it in the bin. This is a beautiful design, a beautiful design. So much goes into this, so much energy goes into it, so much thought goes into it. It is an engineering artwork. Um, and all we're doing is going to scrunch it up and throw it in the bin. Uh, some major supermarkets do have uh, recycle bins designed for soft plastics, but unfortunately a supermarket can't manage itself. It's up to the person with the plastic in their hand to make that decision. And unfortunately, those decisions aren't being made um, with sustainability in mind. Um, and so I just really want to, to question the, the system we've got right now about um, this amazing product is being made, but it, it's not being treated the way it should. <laughs> now, recycling is definitely a much better option, but what is even better is to find uh, a new product to replace these single-use plastics. This is how particular the design of plastic wrap is. Think about how particular the design of plastic shopping bags are and plastic water bottles are. And all we're doing is throwing them in the bin. I wish I knew you before the mountain We're polluted! I wish I knew you before the stars We're covered in smog!